Thank you very much for coming. This is Bhagavad Gita as it is. Let's set this where it's supposed to be. This is chapter 17, text 16. Mana prasada samyatvam maunamatma vinigraha bhava sangshuddhiritvetat tapo mana samuchate. Satisfaction, simplicity, gravity, self-control, and purification of one's existence are the austerities of the mind. Purport. To make the mind austere is to detach it from sense gratification. It should be so trained that it can always be thinking of doing good for others. The best training for the mind is gravity in thought. One should not deviate from Krishna consciousness and must always avoid sense gratification. To purify one's nature is to become Krishna conscious. Satisfaction of the mind can be obtained only by taking the mind away from thoughts of sense enjoyment. The more we think of sense enjoyment, the more the mind becomes dissatisfied. In the present age, we unnecessarily engage the mind in so many different ways for sense gratification. And so, there is no possibility of the mind's becoming satisfied. The best course is to divert the mind to the Vedic literature, which is full of satisfying stories, as in the Puranas and the Mahabharata. One can take advantage of this knowledge and thus become purified. The mind should be devoid of duplicity, and one should think of the welfare of all. Silence means that one is always thinking of self-realization. The person in Krishna consciousness observes perfect silence in this sense. Control of the mind means detaching the mind from sense enjoyment. One should be straightforward in his dealings and thereby purify his existence. All these qualities together constitute austerity in mental activities. Om Gana Timirandasya Kiranjana Shalakaya Chakshrin Militam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Pistam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadhati Shabadam Tikam Pande Hang Shri Guru Shri Jatapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Shagrasatam Shahagana Raganatan Vitam Stam Sajivam Shadvetam Shavatutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Shahagana Dalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kam Shanago Rangi Radhe Vrindavaneshari Prashabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hodi Priye Mancha Kolpatru Bhyascha Kripa Sindho Bhyevacha Padita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Shri Adwaita Gadadhar Shri Vashadi 
Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Dama, Hare Dama, Rama Dama, Hare Hare. In this portion of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is describing the situation of faith or one's attraction to different activities and different modes of nature. Austerity and goodness, passion and ignorance, charity in the three modes, eating according to the three modes of nature. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice, did I mention sacrifice in three modes of nature? Uh, these are all described here. In this, within the chapter, here Krishna is describing threefold austerity in the mode of goodness. Austerity of uh, the body, austerity of the mind, and austerity of uh, speech. Austerity means undergoing some voluntary trouble or inconvenience for the purpose of advancement. Materially, Hiranyakashipu uh, underwent severe tapasya or austerity to obtain boons from Lord Brahma. Or from another point of another mundane example, I think Thomas Edison was trying to invite to invent the light bulb. So he was trying this, he was trying that, he was trying in a different way, a different way. Uh, burning the midnight oil, as they say, since there was no electric light at that time. <laughs> so he was going through so much trouble to obtain some result. Sports competitors <laughs> undergo a lot of trouble. They mm, regulate their diet, they regulate so many things about their lives. They practice very intensely to obtain some result. Uh, so austerity makes things happen, or one accomplishes things through austerity. And austerity involves this sort of voluntary uh, inconvenience or trouble or, mm, yeah, uh, for the sake of achieving something. And that can be in ignorance and passion and goodness, according to what wants to what one wants to achieve. Uh, if one wants, <laughs> like austerity and ignorance is described uh, elsewhere, or two verses later. Hmm. Three verses later. Mudha grahin atmano yat pireya kriyate tapa padas yod sadhanartam vat tatam samudharatam. When one engages in foolish activities uh, with mm, self torture or paras yod sadhanartam va for the sake of causing harm to others. Uh, that kind of austerity, and people do that, they undergo great trouble to cause harm to others. Um, that's in the mode of ignorance. Or austerity in the mode of passion. Satkara mana pujar tam tapo dampina chaiva yat. Kriyate tariha proktam rajasam chalamadruvam. When austerity is performed with great pride and with, um, for the sake of gaining respect and honor and worship, that's in the mode of passion. Then there's austerity in the mode of goodness. That's what we're reading about today. 
uh, there can be austerity of speech, austerity of the body, austerity of mind. Uh, the austerity of the, the body is to um, offer respects to the uh, Lord, to the spiritual master, to superiors like the mother and father, to, um, yes, Cleanliness is austerity. You have to go through the trouble of taking your bath. Uh, straightforwardness is another austerity. Uh, a brahmacharya to live as a brahmachari. Uh, then uh, austerity of speech is anurvega karam bhakyam satyam priyahitam shayat. To speak in such a way as not to agitate others, not to disturb others. To say something which is true and which is pleasing at the same time. Svadhyaya uh, Bhyasanam Chaiva, or to recite uh, Vedic literature. This is all austerity of uh, speech. Banmaya Tapu Chate. Now, Austerity of the mind. Prabhupada says, austerity of the mind is to detach it from sense gratification. Prabhupada has a, a phrase that he sometimes has used, agitating the mind for sense gratification. Agitating the mind. Elsewhere in the Bhagavad Gita, prajahati yadakaman sarvan parta manogatan sign of a self-realized person is he gives up mm, desires that are born from mental concoction. Born from mental concoction. Chakvan uh, sheshan. No. Chakvan sheshata. Sankalpa prabhavan kaman chakva sheshan. The, in material life, we, uh, this is a big part of, of what goes on, is that we concoct something in our minds for sense gratification and then try to enjoy more by further mental activity. Uh, it could be like this, it could be like that, I could do this, I could do that, this, that, this, that. We could do this. One sees a, a girl and she thinks well, she's nice. Uh, then one thinks, well, I could maybe I could talk to her, and then maybe she'd say this, and maybe I'd say that, and then maybe she'd, uh, you know, look at me, and, and I'd look at her, and and then maybe I don't know, this might happen, and that might happen, and then pretty soon one is building up a whole <coughs> fantasy, a whole fantasy. Uh, and this goes on in, in so many spheres of activity. Uh, it's all in the mind. And in the mind, these things are pumped up, pumped up, pumped up. Hmm. We dream up so many things for sense enjoyment, and then when we actually go after sense enjoyment and it doesn't match what's gone on in our mind, then we become disappointed or angry or frustrated. It was supposed to be this, but it's only that. Because the mind has cooked up such an idea of uh, enjoyment that it can never be fulfilled. Asha Pasha Shatayar Badha Kama Krodha Parayana. Asha Pasha Shatayar Badha means thousands and thousands of desires. We uh, think about this, we think about that. Wouldn't this be good? I wish I had that. And on and on. The mind is busy, 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 busy. Cooking up something. Or more subtly, some intellectual enjoyment. Oh, huh cooking up ideas of scholarship and, and creative, uh, speculative ideas. And maybe one is thinking, this will be appreciated, that will be appreciated. 
or this will defeat my predecessors, that will defeat my opponents. So there's a certain subtle pleasure to that kind of activity. So here, mana prasada, what is austerity for the mind? What is austerity for the mind? Mana prasad. Mana prasad means just to be satisfied. Hmm? Modern life means pump up something in the mind more, more, more. And austerity and goodness means just to be satisfied. Satisfaction of the mind. I don't need to, you know, like you see those little globes that they make and you shake them and you get all sorts of snowflakes or something. We do that with the mind. We want to see a picture. So mana prasad means just let the mind be peaceful. Mana prasada. Uh, yes. Mana prasada. The and how to, to make the mind satisfied? Um, to give it, to let it be in Krishna consciousness. When the mind is Krishna conscious, prashanta, man, uh, what is that? Prashanta shesha manoratantara. Prashanta means fully peaceful. Prashanta nishesha manoratantara. Uh, Nishesha man Manora Tantra means freed from the business that one has gotten off the chariot of the mind. The mind is like a chariot and it's going and Prashanta uh, Nishesha Manora means chariot is stopped. The chariot is stopped. Now we can be peaceful. Uh, when does it stop? When it's filled with thoughts of Krishna. Or more, more basically, when it's uh, when we detach it from ideas of sense enjoyment, the eye shoots something to the mind, the ear shoots something to the mind, the other senses shoot something to the mind, and the mind starts getting hyped up. Uh, so detaching the mind from thoughts of sense gratification. What is that in the second chapter? Apuryamana machalam pratishtam samudra mahapa pravishanti advat. Tadvat kama yam pravishanti sarve. Sashantam apnoti. Nakamakami. Kamakami is, is a very interesting word. It means desiring to desire. Which is the same thing, hyping up our mind and trying to enjoy by shaking up the mind, by agitating the mind. That's Prabhupada's phrase, agitating the mind for sense gratification. Thinking up, the ch -ch 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 -ch. thinking of different ideas of sense enjoyment. Letting the mind, you know, we, what is it when we read a book? Um, it may be a very s a, a book about philosophy, or maybe a book typically romance. So let's take romance for the example because it's easy. When we read some book book about romance or about murder or about such things, then the mind is, is, gets into it. That's what the author is trying to do, is to capture your mind and get it going on the romantic encounter or the, the very dangerous business of, say, murder, mm, what would you say, uh, mystery and all of that. So that the mind is going and going and going and going. So, prashanta nishesha manora tantra means to detach the mind from sense gratification, not to agitate it further by reading novels and fiction and or gambling is another business for agitating the mind. I could win. I've got a chance. I could win. 
and the mind becomes, or you see people at a slot machine, because the mind is so in it. Or these days, video games, you know, you're busy slaying enemies and all of this, and the mind is so in it that the mind is becoming more and more disturbed. And that disturbance creates a certain kind of a um, gratification or, you know, something. It's an experience, not gratification, an experience. Or people go on roller coaster rides, you know, or, or similar rides. And what is it? Just agitating the mind and it creates some sort of experience and the experience is taken as enjoyment. So austerity of the mind means just be satisfied. Uh, and that's possible when one is thinking of Krishna. Manaprasada somya tvam. Somya means mm, simplicity. Mm. What is it? Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. You know, we, there are people who, you know, they can't, they can't just tell the truth. It's too easy. They have to, you know, for no good reason really, present something other than the way it is. Or, because they do have a reason, they're trying to cheat, they're trying to conceal, they're trying to do this, they're trying to do this. So the mind becomes busy with that. Duplicity. Or because we want to present ourselves in a certain light. You know? What have you been doing? Oh, I've been studying the Upanishads. Actually, I was watching uh, YouTube, but I have to say something that I think would impress people. So in different ways, Mm -hmm. duplicity. But somya is another austerity of the mind. Just to be straightforward as it is, not cooking up a big uh, facade. And mona. Mona means silence. Uh, We've seen people who take a vow of silence, but usually they're, they have a, a chalkboard or something, and they're still writing. Or they have a scratch pad. But real silence, Prabhupada explains, means just to talk about Krishna. To be materially silent. Not to be yap, yap, yapping about useless topics, which again agitate the mind but simply to be talking about Krishna. There's so many wonderful topics. There's Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita. There's so many Krishna topics, and one can speak about Krishna. That's also austerity of speech. Uh, so, uh, monam. Otherwise, if I have nothing to say, then quiet. Uh, Manaprasada, Somya uh, Tvam, then Maunam and Atma Vinigraha. Atma Vinigraha means self control. Self control again means not to let the mind carry me away. The mind becomes attracted by this, by that, by this. Things that make no sense actually, but just uh, the mind becomes. Because, what is it? Chanchala hi mana krishna pramati balavadritam dasyaham nigraham manye vayuri vishduskaram The mind is fickle, the mind is always going this way and that way. Chanchal means fickle. Uh, pramati, and then it becomes crazy and powerful and it's hard to say no. Uh, so Arjuna said, controlling the mind, it seems like controlling the hurricane. Stop. Uh, how will you do it? So Krishna says, samsayam mahabaho manodur nigraham chalan 
Abhyasena tu konti avairagi in the And mind is, yes, he says, it's difficult to control, but we can control it. Uh, what is that? Uh, hmm. Abhyasena tu konti. Prabhupada translates abhyas as suitable practice. Practice that doesn't work won't get me anywhere. It's suitable practice. Abhyas. Abhyasa yoga yuktena cheta sadhana gami. Suitable practice. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. This is suitable practice for Kali Yuga. And Vairagi, not detachment. So, Hmm. Then bhava some should here uh, to purify one's existence. Tapo And again, Prabhupada says the best way to purify our existence is to detach the mind from needless thoughts of sense gratification. So, Dramuna uh, Charja prays, what is that? Bhavantam evanu chalan nirantara prashanta nishesha manora tantara kadaham aikantika nichikinkara praharshi ishyami sanata jivita. My mind will be very happy when I'm engaged in Krishna's service. Uh, just as a, you know, my mind will be very happy when I'm engaged in Krishna's service. So, this is Prabhupada's message, chant Hare Krishna and be happy. Um, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, Mantra means delivering the mind from material existence. So we're meant to chant Hare Krishna and be happy. And I'll stop here and see what kind of questions there might be. Anuttama Prabhu Hare Krishna, nice to see you here again. Yes. Not to think too much of in the future, but to think about material uh, future or, or even the material past. You know, the mind dwells in the past, past thoughts of sense grace, that was so good, that was so good. It, it probably wasn't very good, but the mind starts to, it, or, or the mind gets in, that was so terrible, that was so terrible. Somehow or other, the mind is fixed in the dualities of material thought, whether it's about the past or the future or the present. The question is not whether I'm thinking of the future, or, but whether, I, whether, I'm at the, whether my, my target is sense gratification. If my target is sense gratification, past, present, or future, I'm going to be a loser. But if my target is Krishna, the past, something about Krishna, and the future, something about Krishna, and the present, something about Krishna, then it's all illuminated. So my question was further in follow-up to this. Uh, so, so recently when I started doing, uh, so whatever I'm doing, I can't just focus on that. But there is a tendency in me that I have a tendency to think. Uh, That's not the point. It, it's not be here now. It's not mindfulness. Uh, you know, only think of the present. Be in the moment. That's not what Krishna is saying. Maybe that's what Lord Buddha is saying, but it's not what Krishna is saying. He's saying, think of me, manmana. And if I'm thinking that, you know, Janmashtami is coming and I could make a flower outfit for the deities, or I could offer this, or I could do that, that's all future. But, that, but the, what is it in the future? I want to please Krishna in the future. Uh, if we do this and do this, do this, do this, we could build a temple for Krishna, or we could do this for Krishna, do that for Krishna. That's agitating the mind for Krishna's service. That's good. Future is not bad. It's not that we always have to be absolutely in the present. Of course, it's not that we should be distracted from 
I'm doing something for, you know, I'm cooking for Krishna, and then I'm thinking, well, in three hours from now, I'll be doing this and that, and I'm planning that. There's a certain concentration that you want, that I'm doing this, I have to focus on this. But the, the, the overall, Prabhupada's overall point is, the mind should be so trained that it will think of Krishna. Something else? Yes? Austerity of the body. And, uh, it was um, kind of tough today because on my walk to the bus, there was just kind of a, um, a very precarious situation with a woman who was unconscious on the pavement and then spectators uh-huh. who were kind of not helping the situation when there were already trained professionals there to help the situation. Mm-hmm. Spectators do. Yeah. do nowadays, mm-hmm. and, uh, and then on the bus, there was a hospital gentleman that was following the bus, and every time the bus stopped and the doors opened, he decided he was going to have kind of a, a really negative and hostile interaction with the bus driver who was just trying to do his job. And so it was kind of, uh, I felt that my mind was kind of getting. It seemed like you, you already answered your question, you know, you but just remember that bead bag next time. <laughs> Just to see Krishna in everything. As we read Bhagavad Gita, as we mm, discuss Krishna consciousness with devotees, then the, these things, even negative, will remind us of Krishna. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, this world is full of miseries. So here's a woman who's unconscious on the pavement. So that's certainly miserable. And then the spectators are making it more miserable. So this is, then I'll think of Krishna, that this is, Krishna has said, this is the, the nature of things. Or I'll, some crazy guy following the bus and uh, harassing the bus driver so that I can remember the mode of ignorance. Krishna says there are three modes of nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. Here's the, the, the ignorance page. You know, the... the, the vivid illustration of Krishna's words in the form of the mode of ignorance. So everything for a Krishna conscious person, everything reminds him of Krishna. Quite the um, adventure coming, <laughs> coming to seventy-two Commonwealth Ave today. Yeah. Padam padam yadvi padam natesha. Srimad Bhagavatam had said that the destination of a devotee is the spiritual world, and not the material world, where there's danger at every step. Mm-hmm. At every step, there's you know, something. The geese will cause danger. You know, they're not bears with claws, tigers or elephants. Just ge- <laughs> they, they, yeah, they they didn't have a problem, right? <laughs> but on some other occasion, they they might. You know, they might be the, the ones that get run over or whatever. So whatever the situation, 
this is the material world and the devotee sees the truth of Krishna's instructions as he's observing what's going on in, in this world. Thank you for going through all the trouble of coming here. And it's and illustrating what austerity of, of the body is to undergo or what austerity is. Austerity means to undergo some trouble. So to get here you have to undergo some trouble. It doesn't uh, you don't just float in. Uh, maybe you went through some more trouble, other people went through less trouble. We have to go through some inconvenience for uh, to achieve our objective. Uh, that's austerity. But when the objective is to cause harm to others. And there are people who are thinking of, you know, how to do that. They're busy thinking, how can we kill these people? How can we blow up those people? How can we rip off these people? How can we hack into the, the accounts of those people? And they're, you know, staying up all night thinking of, or thinking or planning or working on causing harm to others. So it's austerity, but it's austerity in the mode of ignorance. But your austerity is for the sake of pleasing Krishna, so that's transcendental austerity, or for the sake of coming closer to Krishna. That's spiritual austerity. Something else. Oh, there you are. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, the we may be content, but the we're working for someone who's never content, who always wants more, who always expects more, who always wants more from us also. So the Krishna conscious, of course, under the circumstances, you have two alternatives. One is to say, well, I'm not going to work for a person who's like that, because I don't want to be associated with that kind of mentality. That's one thought. And the other thought is that, all right, let him be crazy. You know, let him agitate his mind. Let him, and I'll just think of Krishna, and I'll do my work, and I'll, but it doesn't mean that he, because he's, going to be a mad man. I have to be a mad man or a mad woman. I'll think of Krishna. Is that okay? okay. Something else? Mm -hmm. Yes. How do we think of Krishna if our mind is taking us away from Krishna? Or if our, our work is taking us away from Krishna? Well, you can think, my work is taking me away from Krishna. And as soon as you think that way, now your mind is coming closer to Krishna. <laughs> Even the gopis are thinking our family members are interfering with our meeting with Krishna. So then the impediment becomes a source of, in one sense, coming closer to Krishna. Yes, there was another, yes. You committed an offense inadvertently. Is there anything you can do to steer it in the right direction? You offended a person? Some. Uh, no, I, just, I didn't realize I had. I didn't realize that I had dealt, I dealt bad on Yeah. That's. These things are. Not so serious. It's a question of um, what's the word? 
training and and Krishna is very merciful. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is more merciful. Uh, probably t taking our bead bag to the wrong place when we torpedo our spiritual life. We'll get, we'll get another shot at it. But naturally we regret, I did, I did the wrong thing. I, that's enough. And, and when we regret something, that purifies our situation. Just regret itself, which is good. You know, people, a person who can't regret anything is psychopathic. Really. The person who, you know, they can slit somebody's throat and then, you know, just keep going. That's psychopathic. That's a, a person who's healthy regrets things that, that he does wrong. You know, this idea that you should just feel, always feel good about yourself it's the stupidest thing in the world. <laughs> you know, I, right? I, 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 I act selfishly and, and arrogantly and stupidly and unproductively, and then I go on feeling good about myself. How, how stupid can I be? So your humility means to, to feel that I've, I've made, made a mistake, I've created an offense, I've done the wrong thing. Not that I'll beat myself up always and, and turn myself into some sort of a, a different kind of psychopath but, or pathological case. But to feel that I, I should improve. How, do we, how does our life get better unless we think that I'm not doing as well as I should be? I can do better. So we should think that I can do better in Krishna consciousness. I have to learn so much. I have to practice. And that's good. Yes. Can I share something about my experiences with Prabhupada? You know, I'm just not very good at that. Um, I apologize, but I don't have a lot of... Um, I always get flummoxed when people ask me that question. Something about my experiences with Prabhupada. Oh, I can tell you a little bit. Um, I should tell you, read my book, um, Vanity Karma, if you'd like autobiographical stuff and um, how I got involved with Prabhupada and devotional service and so on. Um, I've written a book called Vanity Karma. I trust that there are copies here. And there you'll find, uh, you know, true confessions. I'll tell you about something about my, my experiences with Prabhupada. Now, maybe I'll remember something else, but um, don't mind if I use your question as an opportunity to plug my book. I'm trying to think. Some experience with Prabhupada. Oh. I was here in Boston with Prabhupada actually right after I was initiated. Prabhupada was living in a little house in Alston, on the street that was on Chester Street, but probably called it Hare Krishna Street. And the, uh, we all went to... I tried. <laughs> Okay, it's time for the RT. Hare Krishna, all glories to Sri Prabhupada. Shri Radha Gopal Ki.